Hello everybody, I'm Liz Weiss and I'm Janice Bissix and we're with the MealMakeoverMoms.com website. This is our very first Facebook Live. I'm and we're nervous. We're scared to death. We're scared to death. <laughs> you know, anything with the new technology. We embrace. We embrace and we hope it works. Yes. And so our website MealMakeoverMoms.com is dedicated to helping families eat a healthy diet and our blog is Meal Makeover Mom's Kitchen. And where are we today? We are in my kitchen. She's lucky. AKA the Meal Makeover Mom's Kitchen. And we're gonna be demonstrating a recipe, but before we get started, go ahead and post in our comments, where are you from? We're both from the Boston area, so we always like to know where other folks are from. And after the broadcast, we're gonna go and say hi to everybody. So we're gonna to respond to all your comments. We're going to fly to all of your cities and we're going to go and say hi to everybody. Uh, actually, that would be nice. And that if anyone's nice. in the Boston area, maybe you can stop by for Facebook Live someday and cook with us. That sounds like a good idea. Why not? And yeah. if you have questions as we go through the broadcast, go ahead and post them onto the wall. And again, we're going to get to them afterwards. So again, I'm Liz. This is Janice, MealMakeoverMoms.com. And today we're going to make our mango coconut soft serve recipe. And it's like a makeover of ice cream, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. It's getting hot out. I love ice cream. It is getting warm. Finally, we've got some nice weather here in the Boston area. It's been kind of rainy. Kind of rainy. But rainy. now, oh, in the last couple it's of gorgeous. days, it's been 70 degrees and sunny. We're looking so. out the window. Yes. Um, okay. You know, I've heard one time, and I don't know if this is true or not, that in Boston, we eat more ice cream than anywhere else in the United States. That could be true. That's kind of weird to me. Like, why? It's so cold here all winter. Yeah. I remember when I was in high school, standing outside in line in the winter, to go to Steve's ice cream. Really? In they, Somerville. Steve's is not around anymore. No, it's not. It's been oh. sold. It's Harold's. But okay. I used to wait in line in the freezing cold for fabulous ice cream. So. And here we are today to make our mango soft serve. And it's a super easy recipe. And if you're just joining us, go ahead and tell us where you're from, please. We want to hear from you. So this recipe is super easy because it is made with frozen fruit. So there's really the only added sugar is a little bit of agave mm -hmm. in this recipe. And so we're all trying to cut back on added sugar. The new dietary guidelines tell us that we should get no more than 10% of our daily calories from mm -hmm. added sugar. And the World Health Organization says 5%. So what's the 12, like it, it, it would 12 be 12 teaspoons, 12 teaspoons is the maximum amount of added sugars that we should be consuming every day. And they're lurking in our foods. And if you're eating they're ice cream, lurking. yes, they're dun, really dun. lurking in ice cream. So this recipe is easy because it starts with a cup and a half of frozen fruit. Now, we went to the store to get frozen mango. We, oui. and alas, mm -hmm. they did not have it. So improvise. We got a blend, like a tropical blend. There's, although I don't think peaches are super tropical, but there's strawberries, mm -hmm. there's pineapple, there's mango, and there's peaches. And so that's a, a cup and a half and into the food processor that goes. Next, Next up, oh, frozen banana. And what we like to do, I tend to buy a lot of bananas at the same time, and of course, some get overripe before you can eat them. Mm -hmm. So we take our bananas and we just slice them up, put them in a zip top bag, and pop them in the freezer. You so peel they're them ready for, I do peel <laughs> the banana you. first, yes I do. And you compost the peel. I do. You're a good composter. Good composter, yes. yes. So, um, yeah, so we've got that banana, and you want to let the ingredients thaw out just a little bit first, because if you were to take the rock-hard frozen fruit and put that in your food processor, it would be kind of hard to pulverize. Mm -hmm. So, like 10 minutes or so, you just let it sit out on the counter. Okay, we have um, our secret ingredient. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, should, should we tell them? I think we should tell them, but they won't share it. So we have two thirds of a cup, why don't you take a look at this, of cottage cheese. By the way, Margot, our fabulous intern, <laughs> is our videographer today. So into our food processor, we have two thirds of a cup of low fat cottage cheese. You can certainly use full fat. And the cottage cheese is kind of unexpected. People would have thought Greek yogurt, which of course you could totally use Greek yogurt. Thank you, Margot. Um, totally use Greek yogurt in this. Uh, but we like to use, in this kind of soft serve, we like to use cottage cheese. It's high in protein. A cup has over 20 grams of protein. We like it because it adds a creaminess to it. And I don't know what it is. 
Is it my imagination or when you make this frosty or soft serve, whatever you want to call it, the cottage cheese kind of gives it structure and holds it together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's I think so, as well as creaminess. It's strange in a good way. And so, um, yeah, so two thirds of a cup. And now I have a quarter cup of unsweetened shredded coconut. And mm -hmm. I love coconut. That's just one of my favorite. And favorite it's unsweetened. Flavors. Unsweetened. 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 Yes. Because people tend to go for the sweetened, and that's again where that added sugar, you know, starts kind of adding up. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna add just a drizzle of agave. This is sugar, but it needed, we felt like it needed just a little something, something. And you can leave it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't measure it, just give it a little. Oh, I'm gonna measure oh, it. She's a measurer. I just give it a little squirt, but. So you can use honey. Like Janice said, you mm -hmm. can totally leave this out, mm -hmm. or go ahead and just add your agave. But, Ooh, how about if I add my juice? Oh yeah. Oh, before you add juice, can I just add a little bit of cinnamon? Of course you can. So, this is just a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Gives it a little something something in terms of the flavor. And while you're doing that, I'm going to add just a little bit of vanilla extract. And these are all ways to just boost the flavor of your healthy, low added sugar dessert. All right. May I go first or are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, after you. There we go, just a half a teaspoon. Okay, and two tablespoons of uh, orange juice. Of orange juice? Mm-hmm. 100% orange juice. Yes, you could squeeze your own if you'd like. Yeah, you definitely can. I'm using uh, store-bought Tropicana, and I always buy the calcium fortified. I know you don't. I don't. No, you buy the regular. Do. I mm -hmm. always do because, I mean, I want to have strong bones all my life, so. Can I just tell you something? I went for a bone density scan mm, yes. yesterday. I've never done that before, and I'm so scared. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope I have <laughs> strong bone density. I hope I have strong bones. Oh, okay. It was an of easy, the result, I don't have the, the results yet. And I just went as like a routine I'm sure she'll line. share when she gets the results. Oh, I, I will. I'll do that next week on our next <laughs> Facebook Live. By the way, because there's so much cool stuff going on, here at Meal Makeover Mom's Kitchen. We're gonna be doing this, we hope, once a week. So again, if you're just joining us on Liz, this is Janice, Meal Makeover Mom's Kitchen. Go ahead and tell us where you're from. If you have any questions about sugar in the diet, how to lower the sugar in your diet, any questions about this recipe, maybe ways you can shake it up, go ahead and ask. And by the way, I totally forgot to mention something. We have a podcast, it's on iTunes but you can listen to it on our website as well. It's called Cooking with the Moms, and we've been recording the show since 2008. A lot of episodes. That's a lot of episodes. 380, no, no two, 286. Oh 286. 286. And I'm gonna tell you about this week's show in a minute, as soon as Janice tells you about orange zest and orange <laughs> juice. So I'm going to add the zest, about a half teaspoon, we said. Right, quarter teaspoon, teaspoon, half quarter teaspoon. teaspoon. Mm -hmm. I don't measure, unlike Liz. <laughs> I just say, oh, let's put a little orange zest in here. It adds a really nice, a nice flavor. And tell me about orange juice. So Janice went down to Florida a couple weeks ago to check out the Tropicana Orange Bros. Okay. The processing That's facility, good. you think? Yeah, it's good. I'm just gonna add a little more. Just, <laughs> just, just to it. get under my skin yeah. just a little it bit. It doesn't take much, does, does it? It does not take much. Just <laughs> add the zest of the whole orange and whatever the recipe. Like, whatever you like. So I did, I went down to see the Orange Bros mm -hmm. and it was, Fascinating. The one orange tree produces about 500 oranges, and that's enough to make 12 gallons of orange juice. So, kind of cool. And the processing facility can squeeze. They, they just, they cut the oranges in half, a lot of Valencia oranges, cut them in half, and they ream them to get the juice out. 34,000 per minute. Of oranges. Of oranges. That's a lot. So they make a lot of orange juice. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, everyone knows orange juice is high in vitamin C. It has all sorts of wonderful um, nutrients in here. Some vitamin A. It's got vitamin D, this one. But what I found fascinating when I was down there is it also has a phytonutrient called hesperidin. Hesperidin. Yeah. Okay. Din. Hesperidin. Hesperidin. Yes. And okay. it's, it's a phytonutrient. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant. And an orange has some hesperidin. But when you make orange juice, you, you squeeze the oranges and then you pasteurize it quick. Mm -hmm. 
and it actually releases more of the hesperidin when during pasteurization. Right. So it actually increases the levels, much like lycopene. So a in tomato, tomatoes, yeah, right. Tomatoes. tomatoes have some lycopene, but tomato sauce and processed tomato products have a lot more. And you use the word processed, and don't be afraid when you hear the word processed because canned beans are processed, pasta sauce, tomato mm -hmm. sauce is processed, orange juice is processed. It has to go through a process to get from the farm to you. And so that's really cool that the, the, the heat from that pasteurization unleashes more yeah. of this that phytonutrient. I was so excited about that. Now, what does it do for you? What does the antioxidant anti do? Oh, anti inflammatory. Oh, anti inflammatory. Yeah, it, it just okay. makes you healthier. Makes you healthier. Yeah, I like that. And I've been drinking orange juice every day, really all my life growing up, and I still do. And I feel really good about that now. I feel <laughs> even better. I'm even glad better. you feel better. Thank you. Okay, so everybody who's just tuned in, we are making our mango coconut soft serve. It's a makeover of ice cream. The only sugar that we've added is a little bit of agave. And you're going to get natural sweetness from all of this frozen fruit and from our frozen ripe banana. And by the way, yes, as Janice mentioned earlier, if you have a banana that's overripe, peel it, slice it, pop it in a zip top bag, Maybe even label it because you know what happens when you don't give it a date <laughs> you find it four years later and then you say what is that and it's just all the ice crystals so yeah all right so should we should we pour this up let's make some ice cream and then I want to tell everybody about this week's podcast Alrighty. Boy. this is when cut away and then come back but it's live so you have to stay with us while the process are Process food. Process again. Not a bad thing. Look at that. <laughs> I can smell the uh, cinnamon. She can smell the cinnamon. Do you it's think good. it's done? It might be. Let's see. And now usually we would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. So normally if you're just using mango, it's going to be kind of this orangey color, but yes. because there were some strawberries, you can make this with frozen raspberries, certainly. Let's take a look at this. That is what I call soft serve. <laughs> look at that. Oh my god. I'm going to give it another little whirl. Okay, do that. It's just it's the way what you I are. Did. I want it to are. be absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make it come up. So we're going to scoop this out and go ahead and add our sprinkles because what would ice cream or soft serve be without sprinkles? sprinkles. Now the problem with sprinkles or jimmies as we call jimmies. them here. Jimmies, I was thinking of that in, in New England, in Boston, we call them jimmies. They've right. always been jimmies. Isn't that weird? It is weird. But this is. recipe makes about four servings and of course it depends how old you, your, not how old you are, but how old your kids are. <laughs> If your kids are really young, they're not gonna eat a huge portion, right? So let me talk to you about our jimmies or our sprinkles. So we have a combination, and I see we forgot to add our chia seeds, but we've uh -uh. got, that's okay. We have in our sprinkles, um, slivered or sliced almonds, great source of heart-healthy monounsaturated fat. We've got some more of that unsweetened shredded coconut. Mm -hmm. We would have added chia seeds had we been just a wee <laughs> bit more organized. And then I have added some Honey Nut Cheerios. Now, you could add Cheerios, you could add Honey Nut Cheerios. And the reason I add them is because they're seriously cute. And little kids and adults like them. So, we're going to add our sprinkles right here. And then we're going to give this a little man. taste. Let me give you some more of your Cheerios. It just needs a little bit of chia seed in there. It needs for, chia seed yeah. for a little more pop. That's okay. You can go look for the chia seeds if you I would like. I was thinking I might. You might. She might leave the scene. And then I'm going to tell you about Cheerios. Because last week, or was it two weeks ago, I went to Minneapolis with some dietitians. And we were on a trip um, to visit with General Mills. Big food company, right? And what I learned while I was there is that Honey Nut Cheerios are their number one cereal, but I've also learned that of all their cereals, what they're doing is they're taking out 
all artificial colors and flavors. Love that. And I think like 80% maybe, even tricks. Remember tricks, how bright colored oh, they yes, are? yes, I do. Nothing artificial anymore. So they're taking that out and they're really listening to consumers like us who said, mm -hmm. we don't want the artificial color. So that's coming out. They're lowering sugar in all of their cereals. So Cheerios has one gram of sugar, which is a quarter teaspoon of sugar. I mean, tiny, tiny amount, tiny. right? Yes. Um, more in the Honey Nut. I've, I've, honey nut. I've got, I have the box here, which is why I keep looking at it. So slightly more in the Honey Nut Cheerios. If you really wanted to cut back on sugar you, a lot, you just go for the Cheerios or you do a mix, like a 50-50 mix. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've learned about their cereals, taking out the colors, mm -hmm. the flavors, is um, the number one ingredient in all of their cereals is whole grain. And so we all want to get more whole grains in our diet because so that's all more their fiber, cereals, right? All, all their the cereals, cereals are made with whole grains. Are made with whole grains. That's their number one ingredient. Oh my gosh, look how much prettier <laughs> this looks with the chia seeds. So this is our mango coconut soft serve. Isn't that pretty? We're going to taste it and then we're going to tell you a little bit about this week's podcast because we've teased it. And I think it's probably our, one of our best podcasts ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Oh Margo, my God. I'm sorry you can't be oh, eating Oh, Margo, I'm us. so sad. Margo's our, our camera woman today. <laughs> she will be mm. eating it in a few minutes. Oh my word. That really is great. Mm. I love the coconut. If I now get a chia seed. seed. I, was thinking, <laughs> I knew you'd be thinking about that chia seeds in the teeth. It's just such a bad look. Mm. Such a bad look. Mm -hmm. But so naturally delicious. That is a great snack. Our mango soft serve is a great um, yeah, dessert. Man, that is good. Oh my gosh. So we could put that in the freezer if there's any left mm, over. You could. Blah, blah. There might not be. I doubt it. Where's your husband? Is he coming home? home? No, right. so he can have soon. some. He'll probably walk in. I know. He'll be walking in. Your dog will go crazy. Yeah. And then everybody's going to be like, what's going on in this Facebook Live with Liz and Janice from Meal Makeover Moms? That's why they call it live. Yes. And if you're just joining us, tell us where you're from in the comments. And if you have any questions about anything, post it. And we're going to answer as soon as the broadcast is over. And share it, please. Share away. Mm. So this week's podcast, it was incredible. Good. So we have a podcast called Cooking with the Moms. We've been recording it since 2008 and um, 287 shows, I think. I believe so. And we've covered it all. But the one thing we had never covered was this topic that's so hot right now of good gut bacteria. The trillions of bacteria that live in your gut and pointing <laughs> right here. Yes. And why are they good for us? Because people think bacteria, oh my gosh, it can't be good for me. Mm -hmm. But you are more bacterial than you are human. Sorry to break the news. Whoa. Yeah, you're well, more. That's kind of a you, little, that's a little rough. <laughs> why don't we say there are more bacteria in your body than there are cells? Than human, are. Cells. Human, human cells. Human cells. Yes, yes. Hence, you're more bacterial than you are human. Okay, then. And listen to this. If you we just lined lost up 420 no, viewers. <laughs> come back, come back. If you lined up all the bacteria that live in your gut, that's your large intestine, side by side, they'd reach the moon. You've got a lot of them in there, people. You've mm -hmm. got a lot of them in so there. So we need to take care of them. We do. Because we want the good bacteria. Because a lot of our immunity, our immune system, believe it or not, is in your gut. It's regulated by your gut. So if you have good bacteria, these microbiome, the microbiome is sort of what's inside of you and you keep it healthy, then you will be healthier. It's pretty simple. Yeah, really. you'll have a healthier immune system. Mm -hmm. You might even have a better or a healthier body weight. Your mood might be better. Mm -hmm. um, irritable bowel syndrome, people with IBS, a lot of times they have a microbiome that's not healthy. It's essentially starving because people don't know what to feed it. So we're going to tell you on our podcast, we, we, we did tell you on the podcast, that fiber is the secret ingredient to feeding your good gut bacteria. And on the show, we had Dr. Erica Sonnenberg, who wrote this book. It's called The Good Gut. You want a great book to read to understand this whole fascinating topic mm -hmm. of gut bacteria. You want to read this book, The Good Gut. And we're doing a giveaway on our blog, Meal Makeover Mom's Kitchen. So head on over in the... In the um, in the comments section or maybe in, in the um, Facebook description of today's post or today's live broadcast, we'll give you a link to, the to, post, that, yeah, right. to that blog post. That's a good so idea. you can enter the giveaway. And Erica Sonnenberg and her husband Justin are out at Stanford. They are research, excuse me, researchers and they are on Facebook as 
the good gut. Mm -hmm. So check them out. Yeah. This, this, I have to tell you, I am so fascinated by this whole field now of the microbiome and our gut and bacteria. I really am. It's my top interest right now mm -hmm. as far as learning more about something. Now Janice, a year ago, got a dog. <laughs> yes, I did. Ella. Ella. And she's right over there. Maybe Margo can cut mm. away to a I'll get her. All right, you'll get Ella. She's I adorable. Know. But they say that if you own a dog or have a dog or live on a farm, that you'll have a healthier gut microbiota than someone who doesn't own a dog. Because dogs play outside. And there's a lot of good bacteria that live outside in the dirt, believe it or not. So Ella goes outside and plays. She comes in. <laughs> she plays with her owner. Sometimes she licks me, and at first I thought, ew. ew. Now I think, <laughs> bring it. <laughs> Bring it on, baby. Bring it on, Ella. But I'm not, like... I'm not going to let her have a spoon of my dessert and then no. use the spoon. That's where I no. personally will be drawing the line. <laughs> but and I don't it. want to share my Frosty. I call it a Frosty. It's soft serve. Whatever you want to call it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There you go. Yeah, you're a good girl. This is so good. It is. It's I love this recipe. Everybody out there, share this recipe because Make it. it's going to change your life. Mm -hmm. and, and who knew there would be cottage cheese in a frozen dessert? Mm. Isn't it good? It's really good. I think I could have used a lot more orange zest though, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you kind of blew yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely. I think you kind of blew that. One. Thank you. Okay. I'm just teasing. I know. I'm looking at our notes to make sure we hit up all our points today. Oh, I think we did. We told you about our recipe. We told you about the giveaway. We told you about the goodness in orange juice. We told you about changes happening in a cereal aisle. There was so much that we oh, told you Oh, my goodness. About. So I'm That's thinking next week we're going to come back. Thinking. We're going to say goodbye. Okay. We'll be back next week. We're not going to give you a time yet. Probably next sure. Thursday. Maybe around this time. We'll it might see. Be. I think next Thursday um, would be and time. Our recipe we haven't decided on what we're going to share yet so if there's anything no you want us to demonstrate next week go ahead and request it because you just never know mm -hmm. we might just create something new or pull something out of our sleeve sounds good all right I think we should say goodbye good thank bye. you for joining us thank you for joining us with a meal makeover moms bye-bye